Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to the big show. Stogie Geeks episode 342. Apparently Stogie Geeks 341 ruffled a little bit of feathers in the industry. Maybe. Maybe and just oh Story Geeks, you need to go to storygeeks.com forward slash 341 and check out the sticks of the week review. Email all of your complaints to because they've been filing in. They bypassed Drew. They sent the certified letter, and they came right to Joe H. at StoyGeeks.com. True story. For all of their complaints. So this week, it's a Story Geeks exclusive. We get to talk about, file all your complaints to Joe H. at StoyGeeks.com this week. After that, we'll go back to Drew and Nelson. I will answer all of them in turn and in order as my inbox has been blowing up as I've been ruffling some feathers and Pissing off people. That's good. I've been doing it since 1975. Yes. According to Mama Bear. Right? But anyway, um, this is the section where I know a ton of the industry is panning in on this one. So we might let them wait and let them watch through the whole thing. Maybe. Or I might stick it in between. I don't know. But however, this is the Stogie Geeks Sticks of the Week a.k.a. Nelson's News Buzz, and we are going to let you know what we've been smoking, who Joe has been pissing off, and yeah. Nelson's got some <laughs> news for us. So, What a buildup. Do you want to go rocks, paper, scissors first, or what? What do you want to do? It's your show, man. Uh, it ain't my show. It's your it, show. It, it ain't my show. It is not, this, is, this, this is Stogie Geeks. This show. I believe just, you said I was the bus monitor. I'm listen. the bus monitor. You're the bus monitor. Listen, you said Johnny's I was the bus monitor. Yeah, listen. You're the bus monitor. Johnny's driving the bus. I'm the listen, kid in I'm the back first. seat, ca- caused with, with with the with the switch Yeah, you sit in the way back. Right. You're starting the trouble. I'm starting the trouble. And um, I I don't know. I don't know. Um, this show, like all of the shows here at G Unit Studios, on the, they are not anyone's show. They are for the listeners. And one of the things that I've taken a page out of Paul Azadorian's book is that when something comes up and it doesn't feel right, you say something. And that's right. it. And so that's all I have to say about truth. Some of that. Drew, you want to go first? Go for it. What have you been smoking? Oh, yeah. Or do you want to not talk about smoking? I was talk? saying that it's going to be Drew, then Joe, and then Nelson because alphabetical order. This there you go. Happens. Okay, so A, B, C, Problem D. Problem solved. Drew, go for it. Done. I had that with while well, you two were just uh, trying to figure that out. Locks, papers. So I know. I should have said you'd be treated like an emperor. Drew's like, shut the hell up. I already have this figured out. Hey, come on, man. I say. <laughs> this uh, probably, okay. this, pro- this, this show, this segment might mm-hmm. be Mike Bellady's ass pressed, ass pressed episode, as this will be the most anticipated show. Of story geeks, just set an expectation. <laughs> it could it could be the Mike Bellady ass press uh, numbers. If you don't know about that, story geeks, um, email me. I'll find it. I'll send you a link. Joey to story. We gotta get that episode number, dude. Obviously, it's it is what it is. Mike sat on a cigar, couldn't find it on the set, and he sat on it. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> good times, good times. Go ahead, Drew. All right, arch type pupil. Ooh, have, have you had? Yes. Oh. Recently, just got okay. into them, but All right. you know, go Here for it. Go. So, so you're gonna be okay. Uh, factory Fabrica de Tapacos, La Jolla de Negragora, in South America. For those of you who did not understand that, uh, six by fifty two Toro, wrappers <laughs> Ecuador, Connecticut, binder Nicaraguan, filler Nicaraguan, and this cigar left me <clears throat> at odds with it. Um, only because it's really, really light for me. Uh, body on this one would be more on the medium, uh, if anything. But uh, taste notes, man, uh, on this one here, it's just really, you know, I got a lot of the pine, 
like a piney wood, <laughs> uh, if that makes sense, uh, kind of a sourdough. And then from there, it just started to transition into mild spice, uh, creamy almond, and then and then backed up a little bit uh, into some pepper. Uh, and then uh, just a lot of different flavors. So it, it did get a little complex for me uh, towards the end. Sweet and dry fruit uh, were 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 there to present themselves uh, in the cigar. So, uh, you know, the Ecuadorian wrapper on this, the Ecuador Connecticut wrapper on this is probably where I was getting a lot of that. I don't know factor. Uh, but at the same time, the uh, the, the cigar itself just really really mild spice um that was another thing that was kind of tossing me around a little bit but uh uh so geeks rated on this one i gave it a try one uh if you're into the lighter side of body stogies that's definitely going to be your wheelhouse there um but i'm again i'm I'm not i'm not saying that i won't smoke a light body cigar because i have and i and i've enjoyed a few of them uh some from the perdoma line um uh, but this arch type is, you know, it's, it's something that I think that a lot of people uh, will enjoy. Uh, but you just got to try one and then from from there figure out if you think it's going to be a box worthy or a box split or, you know, uh, what do we call that? Mulch? <laughs> mulch cut? Is that one of our lawn mulch? <laughs> lawn know, mulch. There you go. I've, yeah. I've been trying to get into them. The arch type? Yeah. For four years. Right, and I mean, uh, for for me, a lot of it is 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 bandwidth of time. Right, we we have we have, you know, I, I obviously smoke stogies. Have the opportunity to smoke stogies at work, uh, no complaints there. But mm. like, then they're, they're not carried. They splashed here in the northeast. I always try to represent like the northeast. Like if I go out and get something, it's got to be in a shop that I think is in the northeast. You know that that I've been to. Oh, that's a good point. They're not easy to find. They're, you're right, right. This is what you know, it takes a while for me to land the plane. I mean, you know, Paul didn't hire me because I had word economy, right? So right. you know, <laughs> I don't have word economy. Let me we let me let me fly the plane Joe for a second. Zempa, verbal tsunami. Right. Johnny is the driver, but right now he's taking a break, so he lets me roll. Right, so there we go. Right, so it. like like no, I I always try to say okay, like because because I want to. Exp I am very passionate about supporting brick and mortar business. Very passionate right on. about it. Okay. And to the point where most of my stogie reviews are not online ventures, okay? But that doesn't mean if I don't seek something out or can't get something for a deal, I'm not going to purchase online. But with them, like four years ago, they came out, you know, they, they, yeah. the, I, I think an era as to where they came out, they priced mm -hmm. themselves, here comes the hate email, they priced themselves at $14 Robustos, okay? $14 Robustos. I'm gonna have a dab it off with a track record, right? right? Because right. because and and this is where the industry gets sand in their crotch, okay? Because it's like, oh, he doesn't like them. He doesn't like them. He thinks they're too expensive. Maybe he's a freaking it's blue value. collar worker. No, value. it's no, it's proven. Try you have to prove yourself, right? So right. I had one, and I was like, eh. to me. Every time, every one I had, and I have a picture of one. If you want me to waste more show time and pull it up, I can. Had one a month ago, right? And yeah. and and I would get the show date for when the picture was there, right? Yeah. Uh, Johnny would have to walk me through how to do that on my phone, right? But yeah. anyway, but I do take pictures and I get the show date, right? So the the, the time I, I smoked it, right? And and it, to me, it was okay. It's a fourteen dollar robusto. And yeah. Drew, correct me if I'm wrong. Experience, it's all over the place. Palette wise, it it's just all over the place. So for that, it's like a wine, right? Right. Let's step out of our stogie geeks role and our right. responsible media partners role, right? Yeah. Let's step out let's of that. Real. Let's step let's, out. Let's, let's be real. real, okay? If if we say it's it's COVID and Drew lives down the street, it's pre COVID, or Drew comes down and I say, Drew, you gotta try this more red wine, right? And this wine is is twelve dollars. And he's like, okay. And Drew brings his wife, and I got my wife, your wife. Everything's cool. And I turn around, and 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 I want to be Spock Owen, and I say, hey, here's the eighty dollar bottle of wine. And you guys tell me, hey, Joe, that twelve bottle, that kind of does a little bit better than this eighty dollar right, bottle. Yeah. Of wine. Right? Right. It, it happens in the industry. It happens. It so happens. when you come out with a fourteen dollar robusto, right? 
with with your other stuff where it's manufactured is more online and lower priced. You're like kind of like ooh, like like is it? It becomes a value to the Stogie yeah. Geek listener. Or, I think or we can all agree higher price doesn't mean better cigar. I right. think we can all agree with that. I've had, and I'm not going to name it, but I've had Davidoffs, and I love Davidoffs, but I've had Davidoffs that I'm like, eh, is this really worth 30 bucks? Sure. Like, it's good, but is it really sure. $30? Right, right, right. But again, right, that choice is ours as consumers. This is what manufacturers and cigar companies don't get. That pri- that choice for us to spend, however we make our money, right. to spend our consumer dollars is our choice. You don't see Sony crying because someone bought. Give me another TV name. Help me. I was Itachi. Say, what, Itachi. Oh, you don't. You don't oh, see. Wow. You don't. You, thank you. I'm just saying. Right. I'm just. <laughs> I don't even through. know what. No, we <laughs> have. Like, uh, we, we I don't even know those names. No, we, we have an LG TV. I don't know what the hell we have, right? <laughs> right. Freaking, but 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 you don't see them. It's it. You. This is why this TV is this. This right. is why this cigar is this. Okay. So then they. So then, but I'm going back four years ago. It takes a while for me to land the plane. So go with me in this. But it does relate to 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 Drew's rating, right? Um, you know it, it, the. Then they did the cliche, we're going to lower our prices. So now it's a $12 boost, though, right? <laughs> okay, great. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Right? <laughs> so you made a mistake the first time, and then you, and, 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 and you want to redo that there. Next thing you know, honestly, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to say it, right? They're in the bargain bin. Oh, right. my They're in the bargain bin at, at, a, at a thing and because it's all over the place. So, you know, and, and by the way, I had a cigar from them. Phenomenal cigar. I, I'm yet to do my review because now I have to go on a wild goose chase because I bought it, and of course the shop doesn't have it anymore, and of course the right. reps not available here in the Northeast anymore, and all of this stuff. And there's nothing to do with COVID, right? It happens in the industry. So now I, I, I'm, 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 I'm faced with a decision. For me to give an effective story geek review, I got to get another one to refresh my notes. Of course. Then, for me to be responsible behind this microphone, right? And have integrity, quote unquote, integrity. Oh, quote unquote, up. right? And so, so in order for me to have integrity, integrity. I got to find it. Now I got to buy it online, <laughs> right? Not, 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 now I have to go buy it online, figure it out, chase a fire. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. Yeah. So the cigar, you gave it a try one. Sure. If a story geek listener finds it, chances are they're going to walk in. They could probably talk to freaking cigar shop on the down. Story Geeks, go find that company and tell them, tell the cigar shop owner that you're going to pay $2 below the price. They're going to take it. They're going to take it. Right on. Which tell, which tells me, hmm, wait a minute, there's something wrong with the business model. That's it. Because the street value, consumer value, and that what, that is what relates to Drew's Try One. Right. Exactly. I, I mean... I mean, you know, it, it, it is what it is. So you gave that one a try one. And by the way, the one I had, it, it's super cool. I'm not going to spend the time to, to look it up. I promise I will, I will find that stick and review it within the next two Story Geeks episodes to continue the conversation for, for sake of showtime, right? And I, I, that is my commitment. I will, I will absolutely positively do that. Drew, flash me an email Monday morning to remind me. Cause I some, would do that. Because after this, Nelson and I have a very bad habit of going out and drinking after this. <laughs> nice. If my wife's listening, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. We're working. <laughs> <laughs> I like that disclaimer. <clears throat> Nelson, what have you been smoking? Wait, I thought you were next. I'm next? Oh, no. I'm next. No, oh, shit. Next. We're going oh, to have a I well, thought Drew set up the lineup. Order. Yeah, that's true. That's true. No, that's a good point. Great point. Super cool point. I'm glad. I'm glad someone's keeping Super up. cool. Super cool. I had I am going back from last week because um Showtime I didn't get a chance to review my Oliva V Milanio. Remember someone That's talked true about, we never got yeah, to it. Yeah, we, we right. you gave the news about the um virtual reality hashtag QR code QR code from yep. Oliva and I was like, "Well, that's weird. I have a, a Oliva Milanio um there." And ironically Oliva's in the news this week. But Nelson will bring us to that when it's his alphabetically turned. I had a Robusto of the Oliva Milanio. It is a 5.5 by 52 Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, binder and filler, Nicaraguan. Complexity, flavor, and balance on a scale of 1 to 10. Complexity, I gave it a 7. 
Flavor and balance, I gave it an eight. It's available in one, two, three, four, five, six different sizes. I've had three of the six different sizes. What 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 can I say? It, it's to me, if you're gonna go Oliva, okay, you go Gilberto Oliva Reserva Blanc, which I gave a super high rating in previous shows. And it's funny because just when you think that Paul might not listen to the show, he bought a box on site unseen off of my review because I gave it a high rating. And I remember he bought it, didn't tell me. And like it's, I'm making the day up. It's like a Monday or a Tuesday. I know it's in the beginning of the week. So he, he bought a box? Yeah, Paul bought a box. And he goes, and he goes, Joe, I listen to Story Geeks. You are right with these. These are freaking awesome. Wow. I'm like, yeah, man, they're like six bucks. Right, they're super cool, right? So again, right. there. That's my first choice for that brand. Second, the Milanio, super cool stick. You will not be disappointed. Um, you know, it got a number eight in 2016 uh, with Cigar Aficionado. Uh, There's no surprise there. Um, you know, it, 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 it. You have a little bit of pepper. You have a little bit your your toasted notes, but they but they mellow out. Right, mm -hmm. you got pepper, you got cocoa, coffee, caramel. Okay, great, but it doesn't stay that way throughout the stick. It kind of fades in and out. Yes. And to me, to me with the Milanio, even though it's not a Baba pole, I would venture to say, and I'm willing to put my integrity on the line. That's the word of the day. Probably the yes, word for it the really next, is probably the word for integrity. Probably the word for the next freaking decade here. Right? Uh, it, to me. It's the only cigar that smokes like a baba pole. That's not a baba pole. So you didn't get multiple flavors. No, I got, I got, I got caramel. I got um, caramel coffee and a little bit of pepper. A little bit scotch, yeah. scotch of pepper, as we say here in the northeast, a right? Scotch, scotch of pepper. But it, to me, it fades. Then it comes in. Then it fades. Then it it's a damn good stick, right? It's. It's a box split, right? And we say, wait a minute, Joe. If it's a damn good split, why is it a box split? Well, box split, I I'd smoke 10 of these throughout the year. There's so many other stuff that sometimes gets right. washed out with us and, you know, with, with trying new stuff and, and chasing new stuff or whatever we like or there. But, yeah, definitely. I I'd smoke 10 of these there. And, 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 and if, if I didn't keep all my cigars in a backpack and I, and I had a humidor, this would definitely be in my humor. Yeah. There you go. Oh, for the Story Geeks listeners who are listening and not watching, that was the Oliva V Milanio. Box my favorite split. part of this, <clears throat> I love that cigar. I, I remember when I first had that cigar, and I'll tell you, uh, you're very right. It has a, it's quite a transitional cigar. So, right? You know, yeah, it is. And it, do, and it does it in ways where you're like, you know, you, you, I'm a every two minute. I come back every two minutes to my cigar. Uh, so, you know, a lot of woody, a lot of earth components. <clears throat> and, and, and like I said, it just, uh, but, you know, it, it does have its strength. So that's right. You know, and that's what I really enjoy about the cigar. And and the, and the, the transitionals in this cigar is definitely Here's my camera. I don't know why I'm talking over here. <laughs> uh, I'm all messed up myself. How many drinks have you had? With this with this <laughs> swing uh, thing over here. <laughs> just Drew's uh, drinking in the office. <laughs> just some tea. Uh, but yeah, no, the, for sure, this cigar, for, uh, it, it definitely, it, it definitely, you know, it, it tantalizes the palate. It does. And, 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 and you, know what I like, you know what I like about this cigar? Yeah. It doesn't disappoint. Yeah. You know, it, do you go to the nub? Oh yeah, with that, and oh, and yeah. I actually I actually have a Calibri that that works, right? Oh, mm -hmm. integrity, right? Calibri that works. Story geeks, mm -hmm. tell me I'm wrong, right? A Calibri, you either buy it and it works forever, or it only works for three weeks. Anyway, I have a Calibri Deep V, and this is a true story because Paul and I got them. We did a Calibri thing, and Paul's broke in three weeks in there. And when I owned the shop back in the late 90s, Calibri was actually located in Providence at the time. I can't tell you how many people we had there on a Saturday morning to exchange stuff. Anyway. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. True story, right? True story if, if we want to be true, right? But, you know, it, it, you know, it, you're, I deep V the torpedo, if that makes sense, right? And it's God. funny. 
And I know this might sound a little sexual, but I apologize for anybody who who has a grotesque visual. But like, if you take your tongue and put it like in the, there, like you can taste the tobacco components. And I'm being serious, where it's like, wow, it this stick to me, it keeps coming back to me. Like Johnny's no, gonna have to put a rating on this show. Like, like what? No, it keeps <laughs> it asks Johnny's responsibility as far as tags. It, no, it keeps coming back to me. It's it's like it's like you know. Uh, the, first of all, the Gilberto Oliva, Zerva Blanc, and this stick from their lot line of portfolio. And I know from speaking the brick and mortar, Oliva does very well. Yep. in oh, shops, yeah. it's like a Podomo. Oh, yeah. It's like a Podomo. It's like an AJ Fernandez. It's like a, obviously I'm being Captain Obvious. It's like a Drew Estate, right? Like they, they, you know, you you have a shop. It's like an Ashton. You gotta have you, you those are all those brands you have to have in a shop, right? And but you know, I don't really go to the Milano a lot, but there are a lot of times where it just catches me right, and I'm like, I'm gonna smoke one of those. Yeah, and so there you go. Okay, uh, A, B, C, J, N, N. You. Right, so Go. <laughs> have you ever done an on-the-spot review? What? Have you ever done an on-the-spot review? Like, I haven't written anything no. for this. What is this, we Test Joe? What is this, Test Joe's integrity? Have, I'm just saying, so I'm going to need your help with this one, What is right? this, Test Joe's The answer Stay is... Stay with me. No, the answer is yes, I have. Okay, well, I'm going to do one now. But what I don't have is the specs, so I don't have wrapper binder filler, so I'm going to need your help. I think you have it written down, right? I probably won't, but that's okay. The Nelson sounds like he's not prepared. But no, I, mean, I am, but okay. I just smoked the Emperor's Cut. Yes. Uh, natural, which one was it? It's the Natural Pleasure. Natural Pleasure, sexiest name in the cigar industry. Natural Pleasure. I don't know what the wrapper binder filler is, so if you can look it up while I'm talking, that'd no, be great. I'm good. But I'm doing All right. Go ahead. Well, I Puffles. don't know what the hell it is. But I'm do it. I just smoked this thing during the last segment where we were interviewing the gentleman, uh, Greg and Daryl from uh, Emperor's Cut. This stick was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Like, I had already decided in my head while I was smoking it, I'm buying more of these. Mm -hmm. It started with a nice, I, I don't want to say grass, but I want to say grass. Like, it started with like a grassy sweetness mm -hmm. in the beginning. Uh, and we're doing the interview, and I'm smoking. I'm like, literally, this is on the fly. I have not written any of this sure. shit down. And I'm smoking. And by the way, great looking cigar. Like, just the wrapper looked amazing. Um, I love the simple band on it. I mean, even the band was like nice. It was just simple, classy, right? Going through it, um, a little bit of chocolate in the middle, I would say, like milk chocolate in the middle. Very slight. Um, minimal peppery, uh, but definitely like that earthy hay with sweetness. I just, I, I can't even put my finger on it. It was just an earthy hay sweetness uh, as I went through it. And then I think Daryl had even said it about the jazz, but I found it this, the same thing with the natural pleasure. I, I can't stop saying that name. That's the greatest name ever. With the natural pleasure, um, it just, it was a perfect finish. It turn into more sweetness at the end where you get a lot of sticks on that last third where it's, you know, grand, it's a little harsher. Like it just is that sometimes. The, right? And, that was and, the aromatic spice you were uh, The aromatic there. spice. I Chicks, couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> Chicks dig aromatic spice. And natural pleasure. <laughs> I'm telling you, the show is so R-rated today. I don't know what the hell Johnny would take care of it. It's okay. I don't know. Wait till you see my review of the E.P. Carrero uh, uh, pledge. Wait till but I, I stop talking. Anyway. <laughs> oh, mud on. Um, but this stick, I, uh, box worthy all day. Literally, I'm going to leave here. I'm going to go on my phone, and I'm going to order that crap online. I'm going to go on their site and order a box. No question. That was a great stick. Well, I understand. Um not putting this in this category. I actually did two to answer your question. I've did two sight unseen. Was that how you pronounce it? Sight unseen? Did well, you? it wasn't sight unseen because I smoked no. it. Well, how did you word it? How did you word it? On the spot. On the spot. I did two on in the history since January second, twenty seventeen. I did two on the spot reviews. Oh, one was an opus. One went Ooh. very no. One went very well. I thought it was an opus. No, and one maybe was it. Was then I what? I swear you and Paul when you guys got back. Oh yeah, you, oh you are correct. I, oh, history I often, channel yeah. Drew. I like that. Uh, Drew, Drew, thank you for keeping my integrity in check. 
word of the day. Integrity. Because For sure. Because because I did three then. You're right. Because see, I forget about the Paul episodes because like he's like a mirage. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? But but no, I, I did do the open sex that Paul got sight unseen when we went to Casa Fuente. This was back in August of 2019. And there, yep. yes, I agree. First one was that I had, and I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And don't give the name because you were exposed to it today. We were there for the release of what I showed you today next door. Oh, okay? yes. Right? Uh, there. That was like, and, and that's been, well, let's say three years, right? And my staple is the same. The second one, I just like, oh my god! I just interviewed the person. And I'm like, oh my god! I so I spent the time and I talked about it. Yeah. And then I audited them, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> so, it, not saying that that's the case because I've 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 had a bunch of their sticks too. That's why you only got one and Drew got none because they're gone. Right. <laughs> <And> talking about <laughs> the Empress. Okay. Car, right? Darnell, <laughs> right. Darnell said. Just send me your info, and I'll get you taken care of. Nice. See, oh, but you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy for Gustavo. Not our Gustavo who works here. Our Stogie Geeks Gustavo, who always razzes me about Drew Sticks. Nelson yeah. and Daryl will probably get sticks before I send Drew his care package from when he started. So, Nelson, <laughs> Nelson, <laughs> Nelson, Nelson has already exceeded you in that stick uh, delivery. I mean, I got mine in three days. I didn't even ask for anything. I know. I'm, it's true. I'm, How do you like those Lance Arrows? Awesome. Oh, my God. I... <sighs> If it wasn't for my allergies, I'd be smoking them already. Oh, you didn't smoke any waiting. yet. He's waiting. No. That's why my he's... allergies are killing me. <laughs> All right. So, so anyway, um, Nelson, you, you have some news. Let, 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 oh, let's, let's I get do some have news. news. So, unconfirmed. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need an official disclaimer. The views expressed in this show are not Story Geeks management and or its positions. There you go. True. Or mine. <laughs> that's how I got that's how I got away with it for three years. Go ahead. <laughs> Unconfirmed, right? Unconfirmed. Famous smoke may be purchased by Leva Cigars. So there were, there were two articles I found uh in doing my research this week that Famous Smoke may be up for sale. Uh, Famous Smoke is currently the largest independently owned online retailer. And I, I Stress independently owned before anyone starts emailing the show and saying they're not the biggest, whatever. They're the largest independently owned. Uh, and there are rumors out there that there's some corporate moves going on that uh, Leva may be purchasing Famous Smoke. So we'll keep an eye on this. Um, you know, Joe's kind of tasked me with the new sh crap. So I'm going to be staying on top of it, trying to get you more information on that. What do you think, Joe? <clears throat> well, let's see. Famous Smoke, pretty big retailer. Yeah, pretty big retailer. So, uh, yeah, I mean that that seems to uh, have some fuel. Um, I just texted a few people right now in the in-house track and uh, just to see what they were thoughts on those. But uh, yeah, it sounds like it'd be plausible for sure. I mean, yeah, um, you know they 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 have they I believe they've had. A partnership already ongoing you know on the online uh business form so um yeah well, I, can, I can see that uh i don't know it's not, it's not a bad move <laughs> i can i can see if this happens starting a trend in the industry yeah and and don't with, be surprised you mean with brands buying with with brands buying online retailers and online retailers becoming mega super crazy yeah brick and mortar stores it happens in other industries right it happens in other industries so again you know it, you know if if, if if this happens and it happens successfully i think it's going to start a trend okay kind of like stocks in the stock market right now right Stocks were just before an election. So if we go back to 1950s, I don't care what color you are, Democrat or Republican. I'm not talking about race, right? For those of you who are not watching and, and just listening, right? I don't care which side you're on, independent, whatever it is, okay? Just before an election, a election historically, stocks are low. Now is time to buy, do a little shopping, do what you have to do. Also, be, be, be before a election acquisitions are high okay 
True. Across the board. I mean, if you look at cybersecurity industry, acquisitions all around. If you look at non cybersecurity and you want to go around um, special acquisitions companies, right? SPACs, as they're called, okay? Um, you know, they, they uh, become publicly traded in order for the purpose to set leverage and financials to acquire another company for a specific purpose. That is like talk of the town. Now, how talk of the town? Well, let's talk let, let's talk a little numbers. Last year, 19 billion dollars were equated to that. This year, and the year's not over, and this 40 which probably means 20 realistically that will get launched that are left on on the on, on the SPAC acquisition list. Okay? So it's at 41 billion. So in other words, it's double, right? Rough numbers, but it's double, okay? Double the activity than what it was last year to this year, and that's what happens. Now, why does this make sense when it comes to the cigar, cigar industry, industry yeah. right? It's very simple, right? Brick and mortars, if they're not going to do the jobs for the consumers, then the bigger corporations will try to get in on that action. And those are their words, not mine. Right. Right. Because if it wasn't their words, CI wouldn't build mega stores going around that your brick and mortar that you can lie in uh, yeah. that uh, lounge and, and go hang out and smoke sticks. If that wasn't the case, I growing up as a kid, every time we would drive to Hilton Head, right, piling in a car, eighteen hour drive, we'd always stop at JR's. My father would get cigars, my family would get cigars. As I got older, obviously I got cigars, and we go to J and it became a destination place. Right? Yeah. Now JR's changed and got rid of some of the retail stuff, non cigars, etc. But but so I think a lot of consolidation is going to happen. But if this is successfully going to happen, I wouldn't be surprised if other Cigar companies do that. They already have the relationship there. Like if yeah. they if they sell yeah. enough and they have the relationship <clears throat> there, it makes sense for, for for a business move. Yeah, if you look globally, I, I think you're spot on. I think when you start looking at into 2021, um, I I think it's l a little less now. But I think as you look into 2021, maybe we start coming out of COVID, mergers and acquisitions are going to increase, yep. right? Because there are some companies survived, some companies didn't. I mean that's just the way it is. And I think, you know, when you look at that subset of the cigar industry, you're going to see the same concept. Some are going to survive, some are not. Mm -hmm. And the ones that aren't surviving are going to get gobbled up by someone else. Yep. I, I think you're spot on. Yep. You're going you're, you're gonna to see a lot of consolidation. And, and, and I mean, you know, it, let's face it. it at, the end of the, at the end of the day, it, consumers, it's amazing how many emails I get that, and I don't know if you've gotten any, Drew, of that, like, I get emails from still you listen that says you spend so much time talking about like the brick and mortar, brick and mortar, brick and mortar, and like, like, I don't care about that stuff. I just like listening to your show, or I just like cigar X Y Z. You know what I mean? And, right. and it was like, yeah. Or I really like the stick reviews because I want to know what's new and out there to shopping. Because I don't go to brick and mortar. So if I give a review and it's a high rating, I've had still you buy stuff. Sight, un sight unseen, they just buy it because they're like, if Joe gave a good rating, then freaking there you go. And I'm like, well, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for supporting the show. Appreciate that. Let me know how you think about that. And and we could possibly round up some Story Geeks listeners to come on the show, you know, 15-minute segments, and tell us about some of the sticks. Matter of fact, Stogie Geeks. It's a great idea. Yeah, Stogie Geeks. Email me, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. If you purchased a stick that... Either myself, Drew, a former uh, uh, host, has said that you had never smoked before, or Nelson, that you have never smoked before, and you want to come on the show, we'll give you 15 minutes to find out if that's true. Because uh, because I think it's going to be a super cool segment. Yeah, we'd love to so, hear like, that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, JoeHStoryGeeks.com, we'll arrange it. We have a whole automated process, and then there you go. So, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's cool because it, it proves a point, right? Or Story Geeks, if you do not have a brick and mortar near you, and we want to hear about how you purchase online and, and how you what you use for to get new sticks, same thing. We can depending on who we get, we can do two separate shows or one giant show for that. I I I think that that's a super cool um, idea, and I just came up with it on the fly. So there you go, fantastic, I, going for it. But yeah, you know, and and so 
if Oliva does this, it's gonna it's gonna be uh, it, it's gonna set a trend. See, and that's one of the things. There's probably what Drew in Nelson, five companies that are really trendsetters in the industry, maybe ten. Like in the industry, like like in, in, like 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 who's not a trend? retail like, brand, like, like, but like, in like, the industry. Like, like, like let's be honest, right? Let's be honest. We like to have honest conversation here on Stogie Geeks. Okay, let's be honest. Like who, who's a trendsetter in the industry? Drew Estate, but the Drew Estate, right? Um, you know, like that's Arturo like Arturo Fuente. Uh, well, sure, sure. They're more sought after, right? Trendsetters. The boutiques try to become trendsetters and do what they got to do, and some of them have great followers and they have super cool sticks, and we all enjoy them. But again, it's an it's it's an activity that leads to that. If a cigar company was able to purchase a bigger online retailer, that's going to be trendsetting. It's huge. And imitation is the greatest form of flattery in any business. And if it happens, that's cool. But, like, interesting that that's the company that would do it. You know, when that happens, though, and literally I'm just thinking of this. This is the first reaction I have. Is there, like, corporate nepotism that takes place? I mean, what happens when brand A buys online retailer B, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a bias there, right? They're going to promote their shit. Sure. But what if is that really good for the consumer? Brand I'm wondering. What is if that Brand good for the consumer? What if Brand A does enough business with the company Brand B that they're going to acquire and that it makes fiscal sense to join forces and then lay out a brick and mortar outlay and make it a mega destination lounge? I mean, like, yeah. you, you 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 can't be naive, which some of the industry is sometimes, right? And think that this isn't going to happen, right? Like you know. Because at the end of the day, it's about purchasing power. It's about purchasing power for us as Stogie Geeks, not us three, but like people who consume cigars. The consumers, yeah. They're purchasing power, and they want to go after that pie in the sky of how many b millions of dollars get spent within the industry. So why not capture it, right? And so you can't blame them. To, for, for trying to move forward and and you keep us abreast of that story make sure you're, you're in charge of that that's your oh new, yeah i'm gonna stay no, on top that's of your it. new thing keep it keep us abreast of that story because i because i you know i i don't want to i don't want to get into the habit of starting rumors about the industry but well i got something to add to that okay well, i don't want to get in the habit to add to start rumors <laughs> but that but 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 you know there are some good sources that it could be a lever and, oh, yeah. and, and we started and, unconfirmed. This and, is all unconfirmed. No, I know, but 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 I don't want to be like I I, I don't I don't, I don't want to be that. I, I don't want to uh, you know. I, I just think that if they do, they're going to set a trend. Drew, add something. Well, it's already it's already out there. I mean, it, it is already out there. So there's history to this. So and right now, just talking, just chatting with my guy right now on on my phone, and definitely there's there's definitely history. This so Meyer is involved in this as well. So. And Meyer used to be a well. He did build Cigars International, mm -hmm. and so he built that, sold that to uh, Swedish Fish or Swedish Match, uh, and then was bought by Skin. That was bought by Scandinavian uh, Tobacco. Tobacco. Yep. Group. Oh, tobacco. Yep. Uh, I'm so used yeah, to having a yeah. microphone on my on yeah. me, <laughs> right? So, so if there's any truth in that, and Meyer is behind that, then I I can't even fathom that it would not happen but yeah i mean like you said uh it's 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 actually kind of exciting you know because it's more than it is you know if it's if it's going to be uh you know a bias or anything like that so it's kind of exciting because then you get a bunch of uh people from both sides of the world you know uh from the tobacco manufacturer uh and and the uh digital market and you bring them together and just all kinds of neat ideas that can just come up with it, you know, that come up and, and, and just really advance, you know, uh, you know, cigar, the cigar industry uh, in sales. I mean, and during this time with all the things that are going on, I, I would I would say that it, it is the perfect time to, to start to uh, look down those avenues for the next decade. Yeah, yeah. because because it's, it's all at the end of the day, it's all about getting the market share. That, right. that, that's what we're all fighting for. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Nelson. 
Uh, you give, give us another piece of news. Sure. Nelson will keep us abreast. Oh, well, I sure. wanted to do a follow up. So I, I, you know, I talked about the the Trump reinstating the Cuban ban um, the last week, and at the end, I did mention there were there was some scuttlebutt around and rumors around potentially Nicaragua might be on that list of bans as well for tobacco, liquor, etc. So there is. No evidence of that right now. There are financial um, sanctions going on against Nicaragua and the Nicaraguan um, uh, president, uh, Daniel Ortega. And uh, as of right now, though, there's no plans for any bans on tobacco or anything like that. So it's it's just financial sanctions. So I want I did want to give that update. No, on no, that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, I, I don't think they're gonna do anything. They're gonna. It's all it's all about the tax. Right, it's all about the dollars and all about the tax. Oh yeah. And every I've been saying this for five years now. If you combine Cigar Club Radio along with Story Geeks, if you take a piece of the pie and you make a pie chart, every year Nicaraguan tobacco is creeping up and get getting more and more of that market share. That they're, they're they're not gonna because they're, they're gonna tax dollars. They're in the tax dollars, so I think that the that yeah. Can you imagine if they they did a ban on Nicaragua? I mean, how <laughs> well, how much uh, loss would there be in tax yeah, dollars? I, I, yeah, I don't want to spend too much time uh, to to speculate, but it it, it 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 no. But your point is valid. He, here's 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 the deal, right? If that happens, this is the only time I'm gonna be quick, right? If that happens, okay, uh, seventy four percent of every brick and mortar humidor goes away, okay, which yeah. which yeah. would would be ridiculous. And then if that happens, it'll be like if and and I don't want to spread rumors. There's no rumors in here, but it concerns me, right? If Amazon ever gets into the game, set match. Oh yeah, if they because, ever sell tobacco, because absolutely. there was a time where you couldn't buy butane on Amazon, and you couldn't buy humidors on Amazon, or you couldn't buy those balls you like to sprinkle in your humidor. Gel, but the gel balls. I'm being yeah. Joe from last week. I'm being Joe from last week. The the, the, the you, Yeah, I remember you, Dustin. And, yeah. and, and 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 now you can't. And that to me, to me, when I get an email, you know, Amazon of Kings. Hey, we noticed you like cigars. Why don't you look at this? Why don't you look at that? Why don't you look at this? And when I get an email, stuff about it, I'm like, hmm, that never happened before. To me, as a consumer, not me, Joe Stoy geeks. I'm like, huh. The, and and with my first thought is, huh? They ever get into the game? That's frightening. Oh yeah, frightening. It's game, game over. But I don't want to spread rumors. So game we're, over. We're done. Paying attention to all right. Paying attention to your analytics. Cool. All right, Drew, you have a stick because we're gonna go in alphabetical order. So A B C D. Sure. That's you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my goodness. Okay, Juarez. You know I, I've talked about current heads. Uh, prior, and I'm still, I still love, you know, John Huber and his, his, his profiles, uh, what he has to offer, and I still haven't gone through everything. But Juarez, uh, Jack Brown by Crownheads, uh, Robusto Gordo, five by fifty six. I'm sorry, I'm about to cough, but I just stopped it. Thank you. Um, yeah, rapper is uh, Mexican San Andreas binder, Ecuador, uh, Ecuador Sumatra. And the fillers, Dominican Republic and Nicaragua, so tobaccos. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you, just another, I mean, I, I love this cigar. I, I, and it's a cigar that doesn't break the bank, and it's friendly enough for a box-worthy uh, uh, purchase, and that's what the, that's what the rating is going to be on this one. Um, the taste notes on this one, you're going to definitely get a nice uh, punch of cocoa right off the bat. Uh, as you light and you start to take the first couple of draws, you're definitely going to uh, enjoy that. And then you start to get into the creamy, creaminess uh, of that cocoa, kind of like the, uh, you know, how you get to the bottom when you drink cocoa and you get that sweet, that real oh, sweet, yeah. creamy stuff at the bottom that, like, I always like to swirl it around in my cup and then just kind of take it down. I got a little too that, excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, man. It's like, you know the kid in me comes out when I when I when I ha when I get to do that, um, and then uh, and then it it does break into a little bit of a, a floral note as you start to transition a little bit, and then from there it just really gets busy. I mean, uh, the coffee comes in, uh, toasty nuttiness comes in, so you get a lot of the meaty, uh, just you know, uh, meat and potatoes uh, of this of this stick, uh, black pepper on the retro. 
uh, but not too, and it's not too coarse on that either. It's just really nice and transitional, but it, it, it definitely lets you know that he's got some black pepper in there for sure, or it's got that black pepper note, excuse me. Uh, oaky uh, does get a little oaky. Again, it gets a little meaty and a little chunky there, and then it, it tethers off into the earthiness uh, of, of what you would expect from John Huber. Uh, the Mexican San Andreas wrapper on this definitely uh, 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 like a Maduro color. So if you see this in your uh, 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 humidor, in your brick and mortar humidor, you're definitely on the right path. Um, it's about a, a seven to, a, a, between seven and nine dollar steak, depending on where you're at in the United States. So like I said, it definitely friendly on the bank. Uh, I'd box worthy these all day long. Uh, just because they're very, they're very. Uh, you can pass them out to your friends, uh, people around you, and they're gonna, they're gonna think that you're the king of the hill because you know they're, they're gonna enjoy the smoke. Uh, uh, beginners or even uh, the aficionados out there, and uh, like I said, you you just can't go wrong with these cigars. Uh, so find them, ask for them, get them, and then email me and tell me that my integrity is definitely. Spot on. Integrity. Integrity. And Drew, I, I never had them. Um, looking for, I'm going to go try to find some. Uh, sure. Here in the Northeast, they're few and far between, so I'm going to have to. Um, yeah, I've never seen them here. Yeah, you know, I, they, they, they've seen them here. The, um, uh, a couple years ago, they were pretty hot and heavy in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And then just kind of, um, you know, recapped and whatnot. But, yeah, I was I was all into the crown heads. Oh yeah, Crownheads. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, I, it's one of my favorite go-to cigars. I yeah, I just restocked on a few of their other lines. Uh, if you ever had a Tennessee Waltz, and then you like that really punch in the face. I mean, to me, that's a nice. Uh, you know, heavy, uh, heavy body cigar, and it just really gets you where you want to go with yeah. that cigar. Crownheads, so. super cool, super cool company. Hats off to the their underground trendsetters. And what I mean by that is when they come up with a piece of swag, they make 175 of it, and that's it, the swag. And then you go through and they do the thing, and they have a whole culture thing, and I have a hat. And do they under-promote it, you would say? Yeah, no, they, 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 they're just, they, honestly, they, they're one of those companies, they, 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 they just do their thing. Yeah. They, 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 yeah. they, they, they do their thing. They don't worry about anybody else. They don't worry about anybody right, right, else. Right. They're right. in brick and mortars. They do their yep. thing. They're in brick and mortars more in the hot spots, right? The Northeast. Right. I honestly think that some of the local shops, from my experience, didn't do, um, you know, you, you got to go into the shop, and then the shop workers have to really educate the the consumer to consider to try that, and that's been something that's been a little bit fledgling in some shops. Yep. So that that's, John, yep, go ahead, Drew. No, I was gonna say, and John's a fabulous, a fabulous person. I mean, yeah. I have not met him personally, but I've talked to other people in the industry that have come across John Huber, and I mean, you know, he he doesn't need to have a whole army to to describe him. He just he is who he is. Uh, I actually he, did an interview. We we had a story. Yeah. I think it was before your time. It was, yes. Yeah, it was before your time. I did an interview. I'll, if you need the episode, you can type in, go to storygeeks.com, type in Crown Heads, type in John. It's Huber, right? H U. Yeah, Huber. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. You type H -U -B -E -R. in. H U B E R. Yep. Uh -huh. You type it in, and uh, I think there's a T at the end of it, if, if, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. But um, yeah, I can find the episode. And again, they, 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 they just do their thing, man. Like, yeah. they, they, you, they do their thing. And. I've been on like a freaking Jericho Hill. Oh yeah, Jericho Hill. Pet, yeah, with them and whatnot. Uh, we have a box over there in the humidor. Again, uh, super cool sticks, super cool ratings, crown heads. Um, I'm I'm a fan, like a fan of the brand. Fanboy, I don't know. I I have a hat. You don't turn it away though. No, they're, no, because they're, because they're, they're trendsetters, and like you can get into the like the underground thing and collect some of the swag. And honestly, I follow them on Twitter. To me, they come out like this is what I miss about the industry, right? They come out with some super cool swag. Like they don't just give you a freaking medium T-shirt that has the freaking okay. logo on. Like they have super. And by the way, like like we we I have like the crown heads four kicks hat. Uh, oh, yeah. I have I have like three or four hats from them. I'm I'm a hat guy. 
you know, um, you know, and and I just th- and I love the fact that like you, they make them, they make 175, and then they move on and they make another one. And so the store's always changing, the swag's always changing. There's an underground yep. movement for the people who support them. They don't make anything that sucks. Like I've never had a crown head that actually uh, that I'm like that you didn't eh. like right? that, 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 that that I didn't like and 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 they just do their own thing, man. And yeah. now Drew, now I have to go on a mission to 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 get one of these. So yeah, well I, I, I'll I'll do my due diligence and send John an email and you know like you know and and like you said you know one of the one of our listeners was just saying you know his his stuff is definitely a uh and, and I and I share this it's a his cigars are for the discriminating cigar smoker. I mean, you really, um, you know, those guys that are out there, they're just really um, honed in on his, on his sticks. So uh, they don't last. I mean, they, they go, they move, they move off the mm-hmm. shelf. They don't take a lot of shelf space. Uh, and most uh, brick and mortars here in Texas, they carry at least four or five profiles uh, in, and, 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 and they just keep restocking those because people just love them. So, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah my but, hat's off to you, John. But they I don't have a hat. But they but but they need to work. Uh they need to be worked yeah. more by retail employees and then they're, they're just not. Sure. That's all. At least my well, at, we were at least about my that take last care week, right? At least my take care in the northeast. But okay. you know. Anyway. And you guys got some some people up there in the northeast are not doing their job. Because here in Texas, man, I'll tell you. Everybody loves. Well, you know what it is. It's Texas. Everybody loves coming to Texas. Yeah. So no, honestly, I, mean, I think I think it's time. a management thing. And, yeah, and, Joe's know. right. It, the staff, they're the salespeople, right? They're the salespeople right. in these retail shops, no question. And I mean, I've been in shops where someone came in and said, "Hey, I I don't know what I want." Right? They they would say, "Oh, I I like a medium cigar or I like a light cigar," and I've literally seen the staff member have no clue. Yeah. What direction to here's, go in? Here's the crux wow. of the problem. Here's the crux of the problem, the business problem with that. The Rhode Island smoking laws has changed. And so now, for now, they're nothing more than bars you can smoke in. But I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm going to be totally trust. That's not just Rhode Island, right? I live in Mass, and I've seen that in Mass. Pre-COVID, right? Yeah. In, in Mass right now, and people in Massachusetts know this, there's no smoking in any cigar lounges at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Pre-COVID, I've seen that experience that I just witnessed, that mm-hmm. I just stated, that the mm-hmm. staff had no clue what to direct people onto. Right. That's and a those, reflection. those are the people, right? Those are your marketers. Those are your salespeople. That's a reflection on the brick-and-mortar owner, not the cigar company. Oh, no, I totally you agree. I mean? Oh, and, 100%. And, 100%. But, but it's amazing how the cigar shop owner will accept mediocrity, and he or she will be the first to complain about lack of sales. Just saying. <laughs> Right, when they control it. Just saying. Oh, right. I have a stick here, which it's amazing how, how things come together on the show. Um, you say this every week. No, I do because <laughs> because it fascinates me, right? I chose the Falto Mentor, okay? Oh. By Louis Falto. It's a Toro. It's available in one size. One of the things that make Louis Falto stuff unique is that um, each size is one size, and that's it. There's no, like... The different size for right. different sticks and whatnot. So this is a, a five by seventy-five by fifty-four wrapper is Ecuador binder is uh, Sumatra Brazil with some Cameroon in it. Filler is Dominican Brazil and Nicaragua. It's available in that one size. It's available in boxes of twenty. The Falto Mentor was blended in honor of the man who taught Louis Falto everything, quote unquote. He knows about tobacco. Oh yeah, Manuel Anoa. Did you say Man, wow. five by seventy five? No. Five 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 point seventy five by fifty four. Oh, five point seventy five. I probably right, did. Right. I, we were drinking this deer horn. I was gonna stuff. say you you need you like a I mean? clamp with that? Gotta, Jesus Christ. I feel like, All right. I feel like I need a freaking <laughs> rifle and you know. Anyway. Uh but yeah, it was it was for me well and no we were just talking about that in the previous segment there. But yeah. Uh oh, this is right. a complex, carries great balance. Between full and complex with subtle notes of nuts and coffee. And by the way, you will not be disappointed. I gave it a box split. Check them out. Story Geeks, if you need Falto, uh, Havana Cigar Club, give them a call. Tell them you listen to Story Geeks. They'll give you a discount. They'll ship it to you. 
So away you go. Nice. Check them out. Yeah, definitely. I'm just, I'm not, I'm such a fan, and 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 I we interviewed Louis Falto three times. I think off the top of my head, I know of at least two. One of them was with me, and it's amazing how the first interview he's very short worded, Louis Falto, mm-hmm. right? And when he was there, like we had Todd, the cigar shop owner next door, saying like, "Yo, you gotta wrap up the show. He's got a plane to catch." Because he just talked with me forever, which maybe it's my integrity that he liked. I don't know. But he also likes to play dominoes. Integrity. Yes. Ooh, dominoes. He also likes to play dominoes, which which if you catch him hanging out of Havana, he'll play dominoes for like eight hours straight, which is super cool. Hell yeah. Well, it's, I play dominoes with him, and I have my computer up because I'm trying to work at the same time. I have a nice tie-in <laughs> to the... Some news, a news blurb, but um, and I hope Joe doesn't roll his eyes on this. But I am a huge Steve Saka fan, huge. Oh yeah, Steve. Why Saka. would I roll my eyes? I'm a, I'm I, don't a big fan I, Steve I don't Saka. know. I don't know. I don't know. I thought you were gonna judge me. I I'm don't not know. Judging you? I don't. I don't know. Dude, don't Steve Saka's the man, dude. Right? Dunbar Tobacco squatch. again, again. Hey, someone Saka squatch. I have a squatch. You have a squatch? Saka squatch. Oh yeah. I got a Saka. Someone squatch. who's who's internally centered. Is Mr. Saka? Oh. He does his own thing. Hundred percent. I, I, I love. He does not give a shit. In case you haven't noticed the theme, I love brands that are internally centered. Yes. I am me. It's kind of like me, right? Like it, me. It really like is. Like me. I am me. This is what I represent. Me. Okay. Right. And I don't try to be like Drew. Drew doesn't try to be like me. I don't. This show was founded by Paul Azadorian. I don't try to be like Paul. I don't try to be like you. You don't try to. Be, I, I'm me. And then and. I have much respect for people. It has nothing to do with Story Geeks or what's reflected on the show. I have much respect for people who are proud to be you. Damn right. And I have phenomenal respect for companies. Because you've got to remember, what I do for a living outside of Security Weekly is we help companies grow. Okay? It's what I do. Okay? Yeah. And the companies, the business owner that argues with me or disagree or, or anything like that, like, like, that they're struggling businesses. The ones that say, you know, Joe, this is your bag. Go for it. They're doing well. Right. They're doing. They're, they're doing well. And by the way, QuickBooks will tell me. I, I could boot up my QuickBooks and share my screen. Here's my invoices. Here's my thing. Here's my integrity on the line. And they're doing yep. well. But but they're they're you because they let me be me because they understand that. Maybe Joe knows a little bit more about this section of the business, but let him run with it and then do it. Right. And then in my business profile, I outside of here, I teach them how to do it. And I have some that was supposed to be taught two years ago, right? <laughs> and they still pay me my monthly fee because they, they let me be me. And they do that there. And by the way, it's not like I hog tie them. That, that I try to teach them. The different formalities, how to do stuff, whatever, sure. whatever. Because that that that's my business model. I'd love to help a business start. Like if you were, if Story Geeks, if you ever wanted to like start a brick and mortar, um, consider opening a cigar shop, and you don't know where to start, email Joe at StoryGeeks dot com. We'll, we'll we'll jump on the phone. I'll go. tell you what I'll tell you what you yeah, got to what, what you got to do where you got to go. I'm more accessible on Zoom.com because Just of the computer be for two hours. Just yeah, yeah that's minimum, true. Yeah, minimum I know. Of two hours. I know. I, I don't right have word now. economy. I, I'm sorry, but no, because because we could go as far as like, well, what do I need for budget? I don't know how much this would cost. What would we do? What where can we go? What can we do? I would do that. And by the way, I would say, okay, you need to go online. And if you want us to do online, we can do online for you. If you don't want to do online and you don't want to do that there. You're going to struggle. Right. You're going to struggle. Because at the end of the day, it's called search engine optimization. When they to- type in the stick, you better play in that in, in, in that arena. And by the way, you can outbeat CI and JR or Famous. Because if you don't believe me, Cigar Authority, Dave Garofalo, wrote a whole book on it. And the first thing I'm going to tell you is, yo, go to Amazon and buy his book. If you want to open a brick and mortar, buy his book. That's how you compete. It's called David and Goliath. His name's David, right? Makes sense. And 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 you know something? Very informative. What what? what? Say his book is very informative. It's very informative, right? That's the first thing I'm gonna tell you. Read this book. Come up with a budget. See what you have. Because some people say, well, I don't know. It costs millions of dollars on a scotch shop. No, it doesn't. 
It depends on what, what you want to do and where you want to go. Right, so exactly. if anybody out there is on the fence about that, doesn't know where to go, we can you point can you start small direction. and get to big. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But, but again, I love people who like to be them and are proud to be them. And that's why I'm a fan of who I'm a fan with. And others yeah. kick and scratch and cry and do what they got to do. I have no Unless idea how we got from my review to that, but all right. Oh, give me a review. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey. No, I made sense. No, you, know how we got about Steve. you know how we got there? Delmore. Yeah, it's you know what? Oh, this Delmore. is all his fault. It's Delmore it's twelve. Them antler horns, anyway. Go Delmore on. twelve. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's happening. I feel it's like I need to be wearing three thirty Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what the something. hell's going on anymore. All right, go on. Uh, sober Mesa Brulee. Oh yeah, that's right. Steve Saka. He does his own thing. Was... Saka, look, he just remembered. He no, just came back to the no, show. No, because you because you know how you know how it was. Because you think I was gonna roll my eyes about Steve Saka, dude. Steve Saka's a man, dude. Dude, they built a whole foundation of freaking Drew off of it. It all comes for all circle. Girl, all That's full right. circle. Um, so, Marissa Belay, I had the six by fifty-two Toro. Um, I again, I'm a, I'm being, I'm telling you in advance. I'm a huge Dunbarton. I mean, everything. There's not one Dunbarton tobacco tobacco stick that I've had that I didn't like. There just I, isn't. I agree. Not one. There's not one. Um, in fact, one of my bucket list items, and this is so cheesy and geeky, yeah. which is why I love being on Stogie Geeks, was to get Steve Saka to recognize anything I did on social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. And he liked one of my Facebook posts that I did on the Saka Squatch. And I'm like, all right, I'm done. This is good. Mic drop. I'm good. Stogie Geek. I'm totally <laughs> Stogie Geek. I was like stoked. I'm like, Steve Saka liked my shit. This is great. Um, so I had the Sober Mesa Brulee. Um, love the Sober Mesa. Love the Brulee. Love the Brulee Blue, which I'll also recommend to people. But this this review is on the, the Brulee. Awesome looking stick. It's got like a royal band on it. Um, the wrapper is like, it's got tight veins. It's very smooth looking. Um, you get like a nice, it, it's funny, it tricks you. It's got a, uh, a, an earthy aroma. If you just, you know, you give it a whiff. Um, but the second you smoke that sucker, and I don't, Joe, have you had one? The yes, brulee? Sir. Yes, sir. The second I smoke the brulee, glazed on it. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Glazed on it, right? Well, it's amazing. Amazing. Right? And this is going to go into it if we get to it. Uh, my, one of the news pieces I have. But that depends on Johnny how much time we have. Yeah, we, we, yeah we've, we've been going a while now. <laughs> um, but, you know, and I will mention it here, I guess, then, because it makes sense. Saka claims that the Sober Mesa Brulee is not a dipped stick. It's not dipped. There's no sweetening at all. Um, and I agree with him. Um, he did this other thing, which I was going to mention in the news, the STFU exclamation point, which basically STFU you think means one thing, you know, shut, blah, 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 blah. Um, but according to Steve, it's Sober Mesa, try for yourself, exclamation point. I like it. Right, that's that was his genius. That was his thing, um, but I'm telling you, from the first puff, super sweet, um, just delicious. In fact, I I started. I was at Churchill's, which is a, a club that Joe and I belong to, and I started googling it. And I'm like, this has got to be an infused cigar. It has to be, and it wasn't. Nope, it's not an infused cigar. Um, like so, super sweet. Uh, it stays sweet without. You get some earthy tones as you go throughout. I would say second to last third, you get some earthy tones, but definitely the mild sweetness stay there throughout, which was actually phenomenal. Um, you get a little bit of pepper on the end, just a little, not a lot, but a little bit of pepper around the end. You get a little more with the retro hail, uh, but it was it was not overwhelming at all. So Super smooth stick, just super smooth smoke. Uh, and the finish, I got a little, um, like, nutty sweetness, which was really cool for a finish. I mean, we talked about that in the last segment, how some, some cigars you get, like, a, a, a I don't want to say a harsh finish, but a harsher finish. Uh, but you don't get that with the Sober Mesa Brulee. You got, I got a nice nutty sweetness. Um, so it was, it was a great stick. And, and you know, again, I'm going to say, for me, Stogie Geeks, Rating, box worthy. I will buy a box of these all day, every day. It was a fantastic steak. I agree. Agreed. 
<clears throat> oh, whoa. Agree. I agree. Unanimous. Unanimous. Is, yeah, yeah. This is unanimous decision. That's yeah. I, I we sell we sell we have to we have to keep so much sober mesa or any of Steve Saka cigars in our lounge because I'll tell you, Nomi's got boxes stacked to the ceiling. Yeah. Over at over at uh at uh, Prestige Cigars and Lounge over there in Bedford, and I mean, I when I, when I have to man the register when, and that's every once in a while when he trusts me to man the register. By the time he comes back from his whatever he went out and did, I've already sold six to eight boxes. Wow! That, I mean, that, they they just move so quick wow. over here. And, have you had the blues and, in? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> are they gone? Yeah. They are. Yeah. They are. So, but I mean, but I mean, I I. I I will say this. I, I mean, there's there's nothing there about Steve Saka cigars that are, are are, are. I mean, when he when he put that challenge out about you know you know uh, smoking for yourself, uh, tasting you know, and, and people were like, really? And they're like, yeah, they're not flavored. I mean, I, I mean, I had people swear up and down that they were flavored. I'm like, no, they're they're they are just as as natural it's as they the can tobacco, be. Tobacco, yeah, yeah, the tobacco itself. Uh, <clears throat> but there was. Uh, but yeah, uh, I I think that uh, you know Steve is one of the few out there that will. I, I just I love his I love his his I like his I shouldn't say love I like his attitude towards the cigar industry. Yep. And I I think if more people were more on that level with him, then you you'd have uh, unanimously um, everybody uh, just wanting to. Uh, Take everybody at their word and move on. You know, it's about being sure of who you are. And he knows he well. And that that's where you're right. He knows who he is. That is the key to success. Don't be something you're not. Just 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 know who you are and where you are, and know where you're going. And by the way, that can apply to life. Know who you are and where it's you want to go. It's like, very true. You know true. what I mean? Family, family issues, uh, job issues, what's going on at work. People, you know, it's amazing how when I talk to people outside and they're like, oh, yeah, my job, my job, my job. Bro, dude, you, you live in America. Bounce. You know what I mean? Bounce from your job. It's okay. Apply for something <laughs> else. Do something different. <clears throat> Step out of your comfort You'll be zone. Okay. I stepped out of my comfort zone. Be good applying for for taking a crack at Security Weekly. It's a startup company, right? I took a step. I don't know. You know, I knew a little bit about cybersecurity. You know what I mean? I knew like how networks worked and whatnot. I went to Xerox. Big deal. It's all Ethernet, freaking CAD five or whatever the hell cable it is and how it hooks up. But you know something? Sure. I took ed- ed- internet classes, educated myself to learn how to survive in the space, and I'm able to maintain a full time job here. Right, yeah. so in in which led to obviously company getting acquired and all of that stuff. So it's like and 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 even the unknown of that, right? Like you know, people oh Joe runs his mouth and talks and has lack of integrity and doesn't know. We're in the middle of an acquisition here. Security Weekly got bought out by Cyber Risk Alliance. There's a lot of components that go along with that. Right. That we do right. outside of Story Geeks that Johnny's involved in and, and, and everyone else here at, at, at the production staff and, 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 and internal staff. And there's a lot of unknowns, but you know something? We're all sure about where Security Weekly stands. We're all phenomenally sure about where Stogie Geek stands. And we're going to move right. forward. And that's it. And, 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 and away you go. So... That's I think is is the lesson there. Yeah. And Steve, why'd you think I would roll my eyes at Steve Saka? It's I crazy. don't know. Uh, you're an enigma. I, I don't why, know because of Drew. I mean, he put him on the <laughs> map. I mean, you know, yeah. Drew. Did you watch if anybody? The, um... Anybody should be sending him thank you cards. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> All right. All right. You have something to say, guy? I was going to ask Drew if you watched the um, the reveal last night of the STFU. I did not. Are you kidding? I'm running I, 16 Oh, I watched days. the yeah, whole thing. I have no bandwidth for that. I, I watched can't. the whole thing. I can't. 18, 18 you know, the 30th uh, for me, because I have to do a lot of financial reports and in the month reports, oh, forget it. I'm done. No. You know, I, I had a margarita and then bet I was. I yeah. smoked through them suckers of the pack and I had to know. Like, I had to know if I was right or wrong. I was wrong on two of them. So the, the double dipped was the. So Steve said. Um, I'm totally getting into the news, so I won't mention this in the news now. Screw it. But 
basically, Steve said, one is definitely a regular brulee, one is a double dip brulee, and one is a single dip brulee. And oh, wow. a lot of people, I looked online, and I was even on Reddit. I never go on Reddit, but I went on Reddit to see what people were saying. A lot of people confused a regular brulee with a single dip, but the double dipped, everybody knew. And the best part was, right, and I'm totally not going to say this on the news now, but the single dipped was the F yeah. and the U. <laughs> <laughs> the F U. Uh, Sokka made the F and the U the single diff. <laughs> nice. So take from that what you will. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, you have any more news you want to wrap up? Then we can wrap up. Uh, as far as news, oh, no. Is there anything else no, you want to discuss, good. Is there anything else you want to discuss no, I'm Drew? Good. Are we going to touch a little bit about the uh, about this, uh, I don't know, integrity Oh, you want to talk from about last week? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I just want to—I I want to touch on it because you know what? Let's that, touch on it and then we'll wrap up. It's important. Yeah, it, it is important because you know what? Uh, I think we all stated last week that that was just—I mean, I know I said it was—it's an opinion that I don't get it. I don't hey. get where this company decided that they were just going to pull all all of their business offline. Uh, can I just say then, I agree with Drew, and not just that. You. Well, I'm I'm not gonna I I don't know I'm gonna step back I'm gonna step back I don't want to say anything. The point well, is, the thing is, it was an yeah. opinion. I agree with Drew. It I was think, an opinion. I think you guys are all waiting for me to use the M. No, 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 that, no, 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 that, no, no, no. That, it's not that. I I'm I'm with Drew. Well, let's, is, look, can we land the plane here? Like, what what what's the big issue here? Well, I just don't like that. You know that that someone decided to. You know, we're we're a team, so. You're gonna say something to one, say it to all, and if you're gonna and if you're gonna say something in that magnitude, and you better be able to back that up. That's all I gotta say. You know, when it comes to you know, uh, when you use words like ingen- ingenuity, ingenuity, <laughs> geez, I can't even say that word now. Ingenuous, uh, ingenuity, yeah, ingenuous, and uh, uh, you know, and your tagline is based around clever original and inventive I'm and real about, you know yeah so when you say that <clears throat> uh you know that's just you know it it I, I again i just don't get it i don't understand what you you know what what mccallough and i'm just gonna say the word mccallough cigars you know dan you know uh you know i understand he sent the letter to you and uh <clears throat> you know i just don't understand you know the the non discussion, the non form. I mean, you wanted heads to turn. Well, you know, you did it. And so, and people talked about it. And so uh, I think that we opinionated people out there just, just called it what it was. I mean, it was just like, what are you doing? Why would you do that? Uh, you know, but at the same point, you picked up my team members. So, uh, I'm going to take this more on the hockey level. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, here's, here's, uh, here's my take. Here's my take. A few story yeah. geeks listeners who think that we are speaking a different language. Um, yeah, they don't have the background. Stogie Geeks received a letter uh, to Paul, and it was just stating that they didn't, um, they're going to not sponsor the show. And so. Let's make a couple things clear, okay? Uh, they were on the show till June thirtieth, and we kept them on. I have fought since I've been here to not make Stogie Geeks pay to play, and yep. I we think all... I think I've successfully, a uh, we successfully accomplished that. Just look at the last yes. segment, okay? Um, you know it. <laughs> It, at, at the end of the day, when other people, what bothers me the most is that when I get a separate email from President McAuliffe Cigars s- talking about my, the, that's not the behavior that we would expect the integrity of our partners to act. And you created a headline, we responded. That's it. Okay, it's like a boxing match. Okay, you create a headline, whoever you are, and this could go for maybe current administration, right? Um, 
<laughs> when 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 you create a headline, there's going to be people who opinionated about it, and there are some people who go, "Wow, that's really informative." Oh, wow, they really stand by, and wow. But you know something? At the end of the day, it's an opinion, okay? And that's why we have a Stoic Geeks listenership about the opinion. And if people don't like our opinion, then that's fine. That's, that's fine in there. But for me to carry a sponsor or a potential sponsor or ask a potential sponsor, there was an incident on the other show where they asked the same freaking question that I asked. Right. And it was, describe the relationship between you and the Gomez family. And it was, and I quote, if there was no relationship between the Gomez family and that, would there still be a McAuliffe cigars? Exactly. Okay. So maybe I don't have the articulation or the or the or the or the there. But see, I don't have time to beat around the bush. Drew, my co host. Nelson, my co-host, we don't have time to beat around the bush. We don't. We, 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 we hear news just like we heard the other news that, that Nelson reported. And you know something? Mm -hmm. If Oliva buys famous, that's going to set a trend. And you know something? Hats off. And I don't care if it's Drew Estate. I don't care if it's Crown Head. I don't, if, some, if a company buys an online manufacturer and we don't talk about it, we're not doing a due diligence as host for the industry. And by the way, and if they set a trend, what? That that's not like gonna happen? If if, if it sets a trend, they'll be like, oh well they went first. They didn't get any backlash. Maybe we should do it too. Right? Because there's an old phrase. There, there, there's an old phrase in business, if you can't beat them, buy them. Right? Right. It happened. Right. I mean, it happened when I was with Xerox, corporate Xerox, and I dealt with color, okay? Copyfax print scan was all separate, okay? And there was a Creo Cytex rip. Okay, and if you wanted to get anywhere with color correction, I'm going to bore you, going from RGB, colors of the monitor, to CMYK, colors of the print, print toner, there was color correction problems. And it was always Creo and Fiery, and they would battle, battle, battle. They'd fight, they'd fight, they'd fight. Well, guess what? Creo pissed freaking Fiery out so much they bought them. And then it became a super cool printer. Right, <laughs> awesome, right, yeah. awesome. So, so it, it, it's like it's like there. And you want to qu question my opinion, and you want to question my integrity. Let me tell you something. My whole business model, whether I'm working here at Stogie Geeks, whether I'm working here at Security Weekly, or whether I'm working here at my business, okay, I get paid on that. And for you to even say that uh, the, the integrity there. I, I, it, it's, it's times like this that I have to be reserved, okay? Because this is a platform for the Stogie Geeks listeners to get news, and they listen to other shows, and that's great, and they all support other shows, and that's super cool too, but they get their news because they're interested in the subject. This is a podcast, but I am not right. going to act. If some other f company came up with some, some idea... I'm going to, and, and, and we think it's newsworthy, we're going to discuss it on the show, and I'm going to give you my opinion. And that's it. It's the, it's the bottom line. And if you don't like my opinion and you got sand in your crotch, well, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I, I really don't know what to tell you as a business, right? I, right. I, and, and, and I'm not trying to be a hothead here, and I'm not going to be a, a, a hothead here, but at the end of the day, when the ashes fall, okay, Either by this means or another means, I will be talking about cigars as long as I am mentally and physically able to do so. That's my agenda. Yes, sir. I enjoy it. <clears throat> now, Listen. we are blessed on this incredible platform of Stogie Geeks to do that. But if there comes a time where it's like, okay, enough already. That's it. You guys got to go. We're going to get three new hosts in there then that's not my decision to make, right? That's not my decision to make. But at the end of the day, and it happens in other industries, it, the opinions are what the opinions are, and you shouldn't alienate an audience. That's like me saying, if you don't shop at a brick and mortar, 
then you are not worthy of listening to the story. That's crazy. Why would I alienate right. an audience right. when I know, exactly. when I know, and by the way, I'm smart enough to know my metrics, our metrics, I'm sorry, our <laughs> metrics, okay? At least yeah. 30% of our audience does not even walk into a brick and mortar. Exactly. Those are our metrics. So guess what? It is what it is. I don't sit there and say, well, you, you don't know what you're missing. I, there's an experience to both. But some people geographically can't go there. But going back there, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm really aggravated that my integrity was questioned. Questioned. Okay? And I will tell you, and I will look you in the eye, and, 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 then, and, then, and then I get insulted. Well, if you wanted our stance, you could have called us. I left you two voicemails. And one at the corporate office. And right. emails, I believe, I've been right? still asking emails for an explanation. <laughs> I've been still asking for an explanation of the, of the relationship with the family. I've been still asking for an explanation of Predex. Right. Okay? <laughs> and by the way, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop and change because a sponsor doesn't like the way that I did something. Okay, that is not my decision to make. Okay, and if I get stopped via this platform, there will be another platform. You know, and Joe, that's part of the reason I like, I appreciate being on the show. You know, I think what I've been on a month, month and a half, if sure. that, yeah. right? You and Drew, you guys are real. That's part of the reason I like being on here. Uh, and I res actually respect what joe does uh and i think the stogie geeks know that i'm assuming that's why the stogie geeks listen i listened i watch my wife can tell you hundreds of hours of cigar reviews oh yeah all bullshit right everyone's kissing ass everyone's bullshitting and i i actually talked to other cigar lovers about it that that Oh God! I wish these people were just real. Like, really, every stick is good. Every fucking stick is good. Sorry, I didn't mean to drop the f bomb. Johnny led it. Family show. Um, yeah. Sorry. This is the new the, the the mass hole in me coming out right now. But it just it 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 that kind of thing pisses me off. Like, we need more realism like this. We need people to be real. Right. You know what I mean? I, I just like I just don't get it. You know, Drew, you hit it on the head. Like he's a team member. Like you know, Joe, true or false? Right? I called you and told you right away. Like we got you, man. We're behind you. Yeah, Nelson right. left me a heartfelt voicemail. Mess. <laughs> nah, it is what it is. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're either gonna talk about them two years from now or not. Right. Exactly. But at the end That's of the day, right. <laughs> at the end of the day, as long as I'm physically able to articulate a thought in my brain and have something come out of my mouth and have a platform, and that's that. And it's simple. And my relationship with Paul, our relationship with Paul is simple. We get a go, no go for the next episode, and then we're, we're going to keep talking, and that's it. And it, 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 it is what it is. The you know beauty, what I mean? The I, thank, I thank Paul for having an opportunity right. to perform or to even speak through a microphone using the story geeks and it's been three years <coughs> and not for we nothing yep. and not for nothing l l l he's been on three shows in three years he hasn't been on here first of all i look at the business model the trust is amazing Tri and by the way say. and by the right, way right. story geeks story geeks right i don't re sit with drew before an episode on nelson or even the interviewee. I didn't even know when they started, right? If you listen to the thing. Because right. because I want that realism to come out. I, I can want vouch that, for that. No That's true. Prep. I want no that re I want that realism no. to come out. I want because if I can't stand here for three hours, wow, it's been that long. God, we gotta wrap up. If <laughs> I can't stand here for three hours and talk about cigars, then I don't belong behind this microphone. And if you guys can't come along for the ride, then you don't belong on this microphone as well. Right, but by the way, that's not my decision to make. It's Paul's decision. It's Paul's business. I have handled Stogie Geeks from January second, twenty seventeen, and forward to this date with white kit gloves. Okay. Oh yeah. I never tried to be something I'm not, and he's given us the opportunity for a platform. And that being said, hats off to you, Paul Azadorian, for having yes. us, allowing Thank us you. to actually yeah. do that. It's a super cool Thank opportunity. It's a super cool opportunity. 
in regards to the the company that wants to question my integrity, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Like whatever. It's it, 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 it's it's like the politician who doesn't like my hair. You know, it's like the bald guy who says, "Oh, you need a haircut." Well, you know something. You can't grow hair as gorgeous as mine. I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? So be yourself. And you know, that's what I love about you guys. I am responsible for Drew being on, and I am responsible for Nelson being on. And I can yep. proudly say that I have handpicked the both of you because I trust you. And I trust you to keep the integrity of the show, not get out there far-fetched from news, not be part of the rumor mill, and hone it down and give you honest opinions about a stick. Yeah. And and and, and then interview people. It's that simple. But it's funny you bring up simple. politics. I, w- I was thinking, I w- the analogy I was just thinking of is... Like politicians with super PACs, right? Yeah. Super right. PACs don't influence you. <laughs> You're the candidate that's real. Like that that's how I look at it. Sure. And that's and this is like I'm I'm new to the show. I I like this show because he's real. Like this guy I want to drop so many F bombs. No. This guy's real. No, don't do that. <laughs> Just, I, I'm not I, I, uh, family I, show. Family show. But this guy's real. Like that's why I like the show. Like I don't want someone to just sit there and tell me, Oh, these sticks are great, blah blah blah, because my sponsor is sponsoring yeah. me. Like Tell the truth. Like that's what we want to hear as cigar lovers. Like that's what I want to hear. And 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 I and I do want to sincerely thank the both of you for backing me up with that. And I want to thank Paul. Hundred percent, brother. Because because you know he got the letter, and I'm like, hey, this is what happened. This is what I said, and and there were some words that him and I discussed, and and uh, you know okay. it is what it is, and and that's that, and you, you know forward. what I mean, and 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 but but the trust, see. Every time I say, Story Geeks, we'll see you next week, peace, right? I think he trusts us. Right. And you know something? That's very hard to find when you're looking for a definition of integrity. It's very hard to find when you're looking for that in any industry. And I just want to say I, I, I am completely, you know, blessed. And sometimes I get out of a show and I'm expecting Monday morning – Balls is can you come see him in my office? And he may say, Rides over. Like you're, you're going down a path I don't like. And then if that's his decision, then that's his decision. I would venture to say that he trusts me, he trusts us, he trusted me to to recruit you guys. And you guys put a lot of effort into the show. Johnny and 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 Gustavo, the crew here, put a lot of effort into the show and getting the show notes and all the web and all of that stuff. And I just I'm not even going to defend, but I can tell you that that was my opinion, and you shouldn't alienate any audience, and that's the way it goes, and uh, that's really all I have to say about that, and if they want an open mic, and they want to come on, come on the show. You are more than welcome to come on the show. In fact, if you want to come on next week, I will bump next week's guest for the show. And you want to come on and defend your position. And you want to talk about that. Because one thing you can say about me is I will look you in the eye and tell you where I stand. And by the way, that's integrity. Anything else you want to add before I wrap up? How about this new studio? (laughs) It's doing great. We got more improvements coming up. Stogie Geeks, remember we keep the conversation going all week long. Go to stogiegeeks.com, facebook.com forward slash stogiegeeks. Email all of your complaints this week to me, joeh at stogiegeeks.com. I want to remind you that behind every cigar there's a story worth knowing. Get out there and shop local if you can. If not, hey, go online. Do what you got to do to make yourself happy. Right. Either way, we'll get, get out there and smoke a great cigar and tell a story. By the way, Story Geeks, if you want to come on the show and let me know if you have bought a box or a cigar or anything based upon any of our reviews, joehstorygeeks.com, we can get that rolling. Special thanks to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, and Placencia Cigars, and of course, a little Doc Head Kid from Texas, and Nelson Thank for you. joining in Thank studio. You. Story Geeks, we will see you next time. Peace.